I am very interested, friends, in trance states. I am very interested in the immersive trance. The immersive trance is one which leaves nothing to the imagination. The immersive trance is like nothing you can imagine. The immersive trance takes no prisoners. The immersive trance is when you are completely subsumed, when you are completely absorbed. It's a mystical state. The immersive, the immersive trance requires obliteration. The immersive trance is obliteration. Obliteration of what? Obliteration of the self, obliteration of identity, obliteration of time, obliteration of space. You are imagination. You are pure awareness. In the immersive trance, you become narrative and living mythology. In the immersive trance, you are that National Geographic documentary. In the immersive trance, you are exploring the coral reef. In the immersive trance, you are looking for buried treasure. In the immersive trance, you find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. In the immersive trance, you unleash the free, brave, reckless God that lives inside of you. The immersive trance is pure, unadulterated awe. The immersive trance is accompanied by a sense of first sight, unencumbered by knowingness. The immersive trance is about virginal noticing. It's about heightened qualitative intensity. And it's about a feeling of revelation, of revealed truth. Now, there's a guy called Otto Rank who wrote about the idea of the holy. And when talking about religious experiences that accompany these trance states, these religious experiences, these flashes of revelation, these mystical states, these trance states, they are non-ordinary states of consciousness in which our sense of bounded identity falls away and we enter into communion with everything, with Godhead. And religious scholars have tried their best to find the words to map these territories, a kind of cartography of, of ecstatic states. And there's a term called uh, the mysterium tremendum e fascinosum, which means the mystery that repels and the mystery that attracts. Because when you are in these borderless realms, and when you are in communion, and when you are paying visitation to these non-ordinary states of ecstatic surrender, and, and, and just sheer obliterating, obliterating astonishment, obliterating enthusiasm, obliterating exuberance, obliterating bewilderment, there is ecstasy to be found there. The freedom from the self is experienced as liberation. No mind is freedom. Freedom in, in, in the sense of just ultimate and, and totalizing expansion, totalizing wonder, totalizing ejaculations of amazement. You become what you behold, as McKenna said. And I live for these states of expansion because I think they are curative and they dissolve the cumulative buildup of stressors from ordinary life. The over-identification with a self that is a contracted, contracted and constricted self that metastasizes the ego that becomes a tyrant, the diseases of despair that accompany the ego that becomes a tyrant are, are finally shaken off in quaking, annihilating glory. Baseline, over-egoic reality dissolves. It's pixelated and replaced immediately with a kind of ecstatic truth or poetic truth that exceeds the literal grid. It's the never-ending story. It's the Goonies. It's the hunt for buried treasure. It's the mystery that repels and the mystery that attracts. All at once, I am in the presence of something grand, something commensurate to my capacity for wonder. This is it. This is the, this is the secret. You know, this is what the philosophers and wise men and teachers, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done. You hurl yourself into the abyss. You cast the self aside and you realize that it's a feather bed. Glistening, effervescent, oceanic feather bed.